One of the things that we think is unique that we do here is that we use a lot of hybrid mulching. We'll have a living cover um, and then within that living cover crop area we'll put rows of plastic within a living mulch and use the advantage of the living mulch to keep the plastic uh, covered and to give it longevity and also again to um, make it a more workable environment so there is no bare soil between those sheets of plastic. This is the first year of our, um, one of our hybrid mulch fields. It was planted in rye in, um, in October. The way we normally would do this is we would plant the whole field in rye uh, and then come in on the same day and lay the plastic. This year we tried something a little different, tried planting the rye between the rows of plastic and don't really like that as well because you ended up with a little bit of a band along the plastic. Plastic in these plantings is all um, one and a half mil embossed plastic. In this case, it's black, although other colors work also. We lay it with a mulch layer, the basic, most basic plastic mulch layer that you can lay, you can put down. It's not a raised bed, it's flat on the ground for moisture. And um, after the fifth year, the plastic, amazingly, because it's been protected by covers and by um, the, the growth of high growth in the aisles, um, is very flexible. So we come through here with a mulch lifter. It comes out in, in uh, one piece. In this uh, case, we're planting tomatoes into the hybrid mulch system. So the way we will do this is we'll um, burn holes every, at a three foot spacing. We then take um, a shovel full of manure and a shovel full of mulch on each side of the hole. Then we come in, set the plants with the manure mixed into the soil, and then cover the plant with uh, mulch to keep any weeds from coming up in the hole. We then set a cage on top of that hole for the tomato to grow up into. With the rye, it's important to let it grow as tall as it can and as, big, and as vigorously as it can. The rye um, is cut. The reason it's cut is to protect the plastic from the sun to make it last a long time. It also is a good crop with improving the soil and keeping the weeds down. There are two ways to mow the crop, either with a tractor-mounted sickle bar mower or a large tractor-mounted sickle bar mower, or what I prefer is using a smaller hand walk behind sickle bar mower where you get a little better control and can determine where the straw is going to fall a little better. The goal was to try to get it to distribute somewhat evenly on between the plastic and the, and the ground. In this particular uh, planting of tomatoes, we will let this rye that's been cut reseed. Later in the summer when it thins out a little bit, we'll go through here and seed annual ryegrass with clover, overseed it right on top of what's here. Then that annual ryegrass will die next year, the clover will take over, and that'll be the permanent alleyway mulch for the next five years rotation. The clover is mowed um, several times a year to, ke to keep it down, depending on the crop. With a high crop like tomatoes, the clover can be allowed to grow pretty aggressively, but with a low crop, it's uh, useful to keep it, keep it fairly well mowed. It actually likes being mowed, it comes back with increased vigor. So. It's a good crop for that. These strawberries are growing in our hybrid mulch system, and um, it, they're growing on black plastic in here. The plastic has been in now. This is its fifth year. It's had four previous crops on it, including um, melons and tomatoes and peppers and cabbage. And now it's in its final cropping with these strawberries. To maintain the fertility in the, uh, in the plantings for the four or five years under the plastic, it's uh, very necessary that the field have been in, a, um, in alfalfa um, or in a good, a good nutritive cover crop for three years prior to the pl placing the plastic in the strips. Then, in addition to that, we'll use pelletized um, chicken manure in the holes at planting to give it a boost for the growing system. It's amazing when you rip this plastic up in the, in the final year, next year when we take this up, the soil under this will be absolutely beautiful.
Cover crops are an integral part of sustainable agriculture because of their role in soil stewardship, pest management, and crop rotation. While many vegetable farmers in the Northeast use cover crops, typically the practice is limited to small grains for preventing winter soil erosion. This video features 10 experienced vegetable farmers from five states, explaining how they use cover crops in more innovative ways. The farmers describe which species of cover crops they plant and how they are managed. Viewers can decide for themselves whether a particular practice is suited for trial on their own farm.